Hello guys, Smart Polly here. Welcome back to another video. So today I will be continuing my Chaos Destruction series. And in this video, we will learn what sleep, disable, and kill feeds are, why they are important, and how to make them. Also, at the end of this video, I will show you how to cache large-scale destruction simulations so you can have large-scale destruction, much like how Battlefield 4 had their Levolution, where massive skyscrapers can be destructible. So now, if you guys haven't already watched the Getting Started video and the Basics video, go ahead and check those out first, because there's a lot of important information that you need to know. So first of all, to review what we learned in our previous video, we learned all about anchor fields and fracturing your mesh. We talked about various levels of fractures that you can apply to potentially have hundreds of small rigid bodies or fractures. And you've probably already noticed um, when you click play and you shoot your mesh, how your frame rate drops when all these rigid bodies are simulating all at once and how still your frame rate is pretty low when everything is already destroyed and all these rigid bodies are simulating. So that's where sleep, disable, and kill fields come into play. First of all, sleep fields are the first field we will talk about. Now remember, fields are basically a region of space that you can define in a blueprint, and sleep fields in particular define a specific box area to put rigid bodies to sleep. Sleeping rigid bodies can be woken up and continue to simulate by fields and collisions. Next up, we have disable fields. Disable fields also define a specific region of space to disable rigid bodies in that space. Disabled rigid bodies are completely removed from the simulation, so once removed, they can be reactivated only by fields, and not by collision fields like the sleep field. Lastly, we have what is called a kill field. This type of field can stop simulation when, when the center of mass touches them. They can no longer be reactivated by collisions or fields. And this last option can be useful for when the rigid bodies are no longer visible to the player. So for example, if the player is really far away from this destructible asset, you want to obviously not have it be simulating. So let's go ahead and see how this works with Blueprint. So I have chaos destruction examples here and what I have here is our sleep field our disable field and our kill box field so first of all what our sleep field is is basically it's just this little box right here and you see here in the components we have a box and a cube so we have a box collision and a cube which is just a visual representation of it with a purple material applied to it okay and in the components we have two box falloffs and a culling field and then all the blueprint is here in the event graph. It's really simple. You have an event tick hooked up to a apply physics field, which is a sleeping threshold, because remember this is a sleeping field. Basically, it tells when a rigid body falls into this little box, it's going to tell that rigid body if it's within a certain threshold to put that rigid body to sleep, okay? And I'll show you how to make this here in a second from scratch. Okay, and then we have the disable field, which is basically the same thing but this is set to disable. So same thing, different color obviously to represent disable. And the kill box, also pretty much the same thing, but this is set to kill. And uh, there's an extra branch in here, which is just seeing if um, the kill is active, okay? Let's go ahead and create this real quick. So in our Chaos Basics project here, um, if you haven't created this project from the last tutorial, I'll leave a download link to download it in the description below. But basically, we're going to create a new field. And if you remember correctly, you have to make sure you have the Chaos Field System enabled as a plugin. And to create a new field, we're going to right click and go to Physics, create a new field system. We'll name this Sleep Field, drag it into your scene and right over here you're going to click blueprint add script this is going to pop up you're just going to select field system actor and it will create a, a sleep field blueprint and it's also created it here in your content browser okay so we're going to add a component here a box collision and then we're going to add another component a cube and let's go ahead and actually change our material here on our cube. Um, we're gonna change it to a transparent uh, material. So you can do this by either creating a new material or 
what I like to do is go to view options to make sure you show engine content. Then you're going to have all these other uh, these basic materials here. Really anything that's transparent, like this color brush mask material, you can we can actually use this as good. And then we also have to make sure our box collision here is properly scaled. Okay, so we'll just have to scale down the cube here, make sure that's locked. We can go ahead and scale that to meet the same uh, size as our box collision here. And remember, the cube here is just really a visual representation for us. So later on in your game, you'd basically just delete this because it's just visual for us, for the artists. Okay, over in the components, you're going to add box fall off. Go ahead and duplicate it again and name this box fall off dash colon. Then add a component. This is going to be a colon field. Okay, and then we can go into our event graph, delete all this, add event tick, get your field system component, and apply physics field. Go ahead and set this to your sleeping threshold, which is the sleeping field. Click enabled, drag the event tick into the apply physics field. Then we're gonna get the calling field Drag off there, set colon field, hook that up to the field on the apply physics field. You're going to make sure you change this to outside. This is very important. This is going to specify which region of space you want uh, this to be affected by. So uh, for this example, we want it to only be inside this cube. We also want to drag off here, box fall off colon, and set box fall off. Hook this up into the colon. Set the minimum range here to one, maximum range to one, It'll fall off to none. You can go ahead and duplicate the set box fall off, paste it right here. Hook that up to the field, and then hook up the box fall off to that. And off of the magnitude, we can go ahead and drag this off, promote this to a variable. You want to name this variable threshold. I'll save that and then we're going to get our box collision drag off that and get world transform hook that up to the transforms of each box fall off here and that's pretty much it you're done in our sleep field you also want to go to your threshold right here and make sure it's instance edible and expose on spawn Okay, compile, save that. So back in the sleep field blueprint, select the cube. Scroll down to collision presets, uh, set this to no collision. Okay, so what we basically did is we're applying a physics field, a sleeping threshold, uh, to this specific area defined by this box region. And how it works is we'll go ahead and go back to our scene here. We're going to scale this up here something like so okay and set it up like that maybe bring this down just a little bit uh, one more thing i want to add is our anchor blueprint our anchor field that we made in the last tutorial we want to do the same thing that we just did so go ahead and open it up make sure that the box collision and the cube collision match up so you might have to scale your cube to match it up to the box collision. In the construction script, you want to make sure you're using the box collision for the get world transform. So I think we used the cube collision prior in the last tutorial, but you want to change that to box collision. And then cube right here, you want to set that also to no collision. For some reason, I had it set up uh, weird in my previous tutorial. Don't let this confuse you because really the cube is just, again, a visual representation. Uh, you're really only using the box collision as the defined region of space that you want to use. All right, now in our scene here, what we can go ahead and do before we hit play, set our threshold here to a value of, say, 500,000. So basically, uh, this threshold is this uh, variable that we've set here. Basically, what it does is when a rigid body falls once it travels into this box and reaches a certain velocity uh, measured in centimeters per second it will go to sleep okay so if we hit play okay so real quick i had this little bug where when i hit play it automatically everything just fell to the ground and destroyed so i deleted my sleep field 
I readjusted my uh, anchors here and kind of moved things around a little bit. Just little bugs here and there uh, when working with Chaos since it is in beta. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and redrag our sleep field back in here and scale it up. Okay, and so before we hit play, we just want to set the threshold. 500,000. Hit play. Then if we hit that part, you're going to see... Okay, first of all, it's um, colliding with each other and kind of flinging those pieces around, uh, which I'll have to discuss here in a second. But what I want to talk about initially here is you can see uh, partially, uh, you can see some of the pieces here are completely still. And that's basically our sleep field in action. Uh, you can still see some jittering here and there uh, when these little rigid bodies are colliding with each other. So basically, Sleep Field puts the rigid bodies to sleep, but they can be woken up and continue to simulate by other fields and collisions. So for example, a collision would be like if I were to collide with this, you can see it's working. Again, it's really buggy still. And basically, the reason why you can see a lot of glitching with this is because right now, at least the threshold is just at 500,000. So they're creating these little chain reactions where one rigid body is hitting another rigid body and it's just continuing to like create this like chain reaction of jitter in it. Okay, so I'll play it again and show you here a little bit how things are working. Okay, so again, lots of pieces fl flying all over the place. <laughs> Gonna have to play with that a little bit. But let's go ahead and move on to the next field, which is the Disable field. So we can actually use the same Sleep field that we have here and changes to Disable Threshold. So if we compile and save that and hit play, go ahead and shoot this and you can see it falls instantly and it's instantly disabled. Okay, so you can see I walk through these uh, meshes here and there's no collision. Basically, like I said before, disable fields um, can only be reactivated by fields and not collisions. So that means that I can't collide with it once it's gone through the disable field. Part of this, you're gonna see it fall like that. Maybe if we can get part of that to simulate, you're gonna see it automatically falls and just stops like that. So we can change the threshold here and bring it down. So bring the value down will allow it to have a lower velocity. So when the pieces hit the ground, it'll have more time to spread out and collide with each other. So hit play. You can see parts of it still kind of spread out just like that. And they had more time to spread out before uh, disabling. Okay, and also we can change this to kill. So if we go back into our sleep field and change this to a kill field. And so if we hit play, I'm gonna shoot right there. Just kills the simulation. So basically a kill field can no longer be reactivated by collisions or fields. So I can run through this freely. And if I were to shoot any sort of field, try to apply a field to it, it's not going to reactivate any simulation. So that's pretty much all the different fields here. So before we move on, I just real quick wanted to show you guys the example here in the Chaos Destruction demo where they use here this disable plane. Basically, you can create, instead of a disable box, a plane, which is a little bit different, um, but it's basically just a plane, plane fall off, plane calling and calling field you're just setting the plane fall off it's pretty much the same as a box the only difference is that a plane is less expensive it applies it to the entire level it's an infinite plane okay so if i just play from here i can show you this you're gonna see these explosions are gonna uh, fracture and explode part of this building you see all these little rigid bodies fall onto the disable field And you can see our frame rate dropped when it was all being destroyed. But obviously now it's a little bit more cleaner uh, because of these rigid bodies here falling into that disable field. 
Okay, so hopefully you guys could see the importance of sleep, uh, disable, and kill fields by now. And we're going to move on to the next topic, which is caching. So basically, what caching does is it allows you to do what we just did in that simulation, but without losing uh, basically any frame rate. So I can simulate this, and you're going to see it's going to play the same simulation, but this is all cached. So you can see we're not losing any frame rate here because this is playing back the simulation that's been pre-simulated. Basically how Epic achieved uh, large-scale destruction in their demo video, because obviously if you're going to have you know a massive skyscraper or a lot of buildings being destroyed, like current computers can't really handle that many rigid bodies at once, um, especially you know if you don't have like the best PC. So you're going to have to use caching to basically save a simulation and replay it whenever you need to replay it. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys basically how caching works. And what I've actually found out is that uh, caching in 4.25 is kind of broken at the moment. So I'm actually in the 4.23 branch of chaos here in the chaos destruction demo. Really any project uh, that's version 4.23 uh, caching will work. And then I also have this Roman statue here for mega scans imported here. And I've already scaled it up pretty large here. I'm gonna go ahead and just fracture this here real quick. So click make, so make a new geometry collection. Okay, and then so we should have a few levels here. Okay, and then in our little uh, damage threshold, we'll add a couple here. So we'll go ahead and go browse to asset and set masses density, crank this up. And you see the structure, the statue just crumbles like that. Uh, what we can go ahead and do is actually uh, set this up to cache and save the simulation here. Basically under the caching tab, under the caching parameters, set this to record. And then you can either play or simulate, it doesn't matter. Okay. And then hit stop. And then if you click back on here, you're gonna see valid uh, cache valid for playback and record so it'll create automatically this target cache and and for some reason in 4.25 it wouldn't create this file so for some reason it's broken anyways in here we can go ahead and set this to play and then we're going to set this from object type to dynamic to kinematic okay so if we hit play now it's going to simulate the exact same way that we had it before so if we hit simulate again it's gonna simulate the same exact way. All right, so if we actually rotate it, you're gonna see it's gonna go back to that same position and play exactly how it was before. So it's just playing back the geometry collection cache that we've recorded, and you can also set this up in sequencer uh, to play back depending on you know a gameplay event or something like that. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to, what I wanted to show. And obviously, you know, you could make the statue have more fractures and um, more tinier little pieces. You can really get the most value out of caching, you know, a large scale destruction. But yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one.